So we're going to do the same thing for example two, but this time we're actually going to write full equations. So again, an equation is expressing that two things are equal, two expressions are equal to one another. Okay, one half of a number, so we already know that that's one half of n, is 10, so equals 10. Okay, six times a number, so that's six n is, which is the equal sign, four. Okay, the square of a number, so this is our number, and then square it, is 25. And 20%, so usually we would think 20%, but when we divide that by 100, 0 decimal 2 of a number, decrease by 5, so minus 5, equals 2. And those are mathematical equations. Example three, what we're going to do is translate the following sentences into an equation, but this time we're going to actually use two variables. Okay, so Mario's daily earnings, so usually for earnings we use a capital E, are $80, so earnings are, which is is, but a plural, are $80 plus, which is a plus sign, 12%, 0.12, commission on sales. So we can just call that S, okay? And we know that E is earnings and S is going to be the sales, the amount of the sales. B, the cost. So usually we write capital C for cost. To rent a canoe is, that's where that equal sign comes from, $25. We need a plus and then $5 per hour. So that'd be 5H. And of course, hour is H. Okay, one mixing one mixture with another mixture. Okay, let's call one mixture X and the other mixture Y. So when we mix them, the amount of X plus the amount of Y, Sally has, so that's kind of like that equal sign, 20 liters of the solution. So amount of x plus the amount of y equals 20 liters. And d, the area of a rectangle is 60 is, that's the equal sign, the area is 60 square centimeters. So we can either put area equals 60 or length times width equals 60. And we can use length times width because we know it's a rectangle. Okay, let's recall what a linear system is. So a linear system is two or more, sorry, or more linear equations that are considered at the same time. So what we're gonna take a look at is when we have an X and Y axis and we plot both of the uh, linear equations, we're gonna take a look for the point of intersection. Okay, just like in grade nine. And the point of intersection is a point where two lines cross. Okay, so that point is common to the first line and common to the second line as well. So let's actually put everything that we just did into an actual example. So Ian owns a small airplane. He pays $50 an hour for flying time and $300 a month for hangar fees at the local airport. Okay, so in one month, the cost is going to be $50 per hour plus that $300 flat fee for that month, right? C is going to represent the cost and H is going to be, represent the hours of flying, number of flying hours. If Ian rented the same type of airplane at the local flying club, it would cost him $100 per hour. $100 per hour. How many hours will Ian have to fly each month so that the cost of renting will be the same as the cost of flying his own plane? Okay, so we have two equations. The first one is going to be for at the airport. Let's put AP, airport, and the second one is like the local flying club. English with mathematics and graphing lines. So what we're going to do first is brainstorm English words that mean the following. So addition. When we were 
when we read different uh, word problems, we're going to look for words that say maybe add or increase by. Or the sum. Okay, subtraction again, subtract, just like add, but this time decrease by. So decrease by some amount, or we're looking for the difference. And you can add some more to this list as well. Okay, so for multiplication, we'll look for multiply. We'll look for times. We'll look for product. But then we're also going to look for things like uh, two times or three times. Okay, so um, look for words like triple or double. Okay, because for double, we know that we're going to multiply it by two. And of course, triple multiply it by three. Okay, uh, division, we're going to look for divide. We're going to look for quotient. That's like the technical term for division. Uh, and then we're going to look for words like half, which is one over two, or a third, which is one over three. Okay, and then sometimes we can look for other things. If you see a root, we're looking for a square root. If you're looking for a square, you're going to take whatever number it is and square it. So times it by itself. And if you see the word equals, you're going to put like an equal sign or the word is, is also an equal sign. Okay, and now we're going to talk about the difference between an expression and an equation. So pretty much an expression and equation look similar. The difference is that the equation has an equal sign. Okay, so an expression is just a mathematical phrase that may contain numbers, variables, and operators. An equation can also contain these three things, but it's specifically expressing that the two things are equal. So maybe an expression equals another expression. Okay, example one, uh, write the following phrases as mathematical expressions. So expressions, there's not going to be any equal sign, okay? So the value of five increased by a number. So when we see the word like a number, we can think of the letter N or the little letter X, whatever variable you want to choose for that. So five increased by a number, okay? B, one-third, we're thinking one-third of a number, so maybe one-third of N, decreased by six, so minus six. Okay, 7%. So when we see 7%, we think of seven and then a percent sign, but when we actually work with a percentage, we have to convert it into a decimal. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna divide it by 100. So 7% of a number, again, a number is that N. Okay, now the sum, so we think of a plus sign of four times a number, so four N or four times N, and six times a number, six N, six times a number. So we're gonna do the sum of these two. So we're gonna do four N plus six N. Now, for example three, we're going to translate the following sentences into an equation using two variables. How we learn this in grade nine is we have to actually go ahead and like plot both equations. Okay, so we're gonna plot the cost. Oops. So cost versus the number of hours. Okay, so let's take a look at so it's like $150 an hour for those two. So let's go up by, let's go 50s, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, let's go 400. And I hope it fits on here, 450, okay? And let's plot one hour, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll go up to nine. Okay, so the first one's gonna be in purple. Okay, so the y-intercept, the b, is 300. So let's start at 300, and then every hour it's $50. So go over one and up $50. 
over 1 up 50, over 1 up 50, over 1 up 50, over 1. And I would just keep plotting this until you have enough that you are confident that you have the, the, the straight line. Okay? And always name your line with the equation. Now, let's do the other one in green. Flat out $100 an hour. Okay? So, the y-intercept is 0, and then we're going up by 100 over 1. So, 100 over 1. 100 over 2 hours. 3 hours is going to cost $300. Four hours is going to cost four hundred dollars, and then five hours. Okay, approximately maybe here. Okay, and now we of course connect this with the ruler, and then this one's going to be c equals one hundred h. Okay, so what we're looking for here is we want to know how many hours Ian will have to fly each month so that the cost of renting will be the same. Well, right here at this point of intersection, the cost is going to be $400 and the number of hours is going to be 4. So the point of intersection is 4, 400. Okay, and you can write, therefore, at 4 hours, the cost will be the same at $400. Okay, let's just analyze this a little bit. Um, when we look at cost, we look at this axis going vertical up and down. So less than four hours, this green is actually going to be more beneficial. Okay, so going with the local flying club. And then over four hours, this purple line is going to be more beneficial. And that's just going for at the local airport. Example five, here's a, kind of an easier one because it gives, this example gives us two equations. So the equations of two lines are this and this. What are the coordinates for the points of intersection? Okay, so we're unable to graph the lines like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put both of these equations into y equals mx plus b form. Okay, because this y has a negative in front of it, I'm actually going to bring it over to the right hand side. And then this negative one, I'm going to bring it over to the left. So x plus 1 equals y. That's what that turns into. Okay. When we look at this, I mean, you can rearrange it. If you're not uh, comfortable with that, you can put y equals x plus 1. This is the same thing, okay? Um, the y-intercept is 1, and the slope is also 1. For this second equation, again, we have a negative y, so I'm actually going to bring that over just so it's simply y equals instead of negative y equals. We're going to bring over this positive 2, and that's it. Okay, the y-intercept is this number right here, negative 2, and then the m is the number right in front of that x in this form, 2. Okay. For the slopes, you can always put them over 1, okay, 2 over 1, 1 over 1, and now all we have to do is actually plot them. So let's do this one here in purple. We always need a reference point, so that's our y-intercept. So we're going to start at 1, and then what we're going to do is uh, from there we're going to apply our slope. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Okay, we're going to apply our slope, and then when you're confident that you have enough points, we can connect those. We're good. Okay, and that one's going to be um, x minus y equals negative 1. Now, the next one, let's do it in green. We always need a point of reference, so that's going to be our b, which is negative 2. So again, that's on the y-axis, okay? x-axis, y-axis, that's our y-intercept. Now, we're going to apply the m, the slope, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And there already is our point of intersection. Okay, so that's going to be 2x minus y equals 2. So this is going to be our point of intersection, and it's at the point 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, comma, 4. And that's it.
Example six, Brian and Catherine want to get internet access for their home. There are two companies in the area. So there's IT plus and they charge a flat rate of $25 a month. So we know that's a flat rate when we do the Y equals MX plus B form is going to be our B. That's our flat fee here. Okay, so let's go C equals 25. So it's $25 a month. So in these questions, they get a little tricky because as soon as we see these this for like per month, we're thinking of putting an M there, but we're going to quote this as one month for the entire question. Okay, and Techies Inc., so this is Techies, charges $10 a month, so that's their flat fee plus one, uh, $1 per hour for use. If Brian and Catherine expect to use the internet for approximately 18 hours per month, which plan is the better option? Okay, so I'm gonna show you why this one gets tricky. So let's go, let's do every three is five, one, two, three. Let's do every two is five. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and I hope it fits on here. Okay, C equals 25, so that one's going to be in purple. So no matter what, they pay $25 a month. C equals 25. Okay, now techies, let's do green. So this one's going to start at 10, so that's their flat fee. 25 was the flat fee as well. If you took a look here, right here, it's still um, the y-intercept. So, and then $1 per hour. Okay, so let's go, let's do every five hours. Five, let's do this in blue. Five hours, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, let's go back to green. Okay, so for five hours, it's going to be $5, right? Five hours, $5. Five hours, $5. Up to 20, five hours, up to 25. And then we already have the point of intersection, so I'm just going to connect those. C equals 1H plus 10. Okay, so this point of intersection right here is 15, 25. So at 15 hours the cost is going to be 25. Okay. So the question is if they're going to use it for 18 hours per month. So what we want to do is we want to look up 18. 18 is approximately right here. Which one's lower at 18? Well, we meet this purple line before we would meet that green line. Right? So the purple is going to be $25, but the green would be approximately $30. Right? So for $18 a month, it's going to be cheaper to go with IT+. Plus. Another way that we can test this is C equals 25. And then we just actually plug in the 18. And we can see that IT+, plus is the way to go.